What's up, NFL fans? I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and don't forget to check out and purchase your copy of our latest football game plan book, Stiff Arming Football Myths. We have these available in both PDF and paperback form. Welcome to Football Game Plans Talking with TD. I'm your host, Teron Davenport. All right, talking with TD, once again, we are going to talk with another defensive back. We're going to go to Penn State, bring in a Baltimore product, Adrian Amos. Adrian, what's good with you, man? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing really well, man. I appreciate you coming on. You know, first and foremost, you're a Baltimore guy, so we had to get you on, being as though I cover the Ravens for the Baltimore Times. So I appreciate you taking a second to talk a little shop, and let's kind of jump right into it. Your pro day that you had recently was a, a very large improvement from some of the things that you did at the combine. You know, the, your four three nine time was was definitely remarkable. Twenty one reps on the bench. Can you talk a little bit about what your goal was at the pro day? What you wanted to establish? Uh, yeah, I wanted to run my forty over. Um, I knew I could run, you know, in the uh, high four threes. Um, you know, because you know I, I've always been a you know, low four four type guy and. Um, and I just was working on my 40, you know, a lot a lot is with technique and things like that. I know I could run on the field, and I just wanted to, you know, improve that time going into pro day. Um, but basically, yeah, that, that, that's how, it, you know, uh, that was basically my, my biggest goal, you know, going there and run, you know, run high four three. How about on the field drills and things like that? I know the Ravens, the Eagles, and Texans, they had their secondary coaches there. And they kind of put you through some different things. How did the field drills work for you? Uh, I did. I did real well in the field drills. Uh, that's probably my best part. Um, it's the field drills and, and the things with the football, showing showing uh, ball skills, uh, uh, hips, uh, and, and, and feet work. So um, uh, I did. I did very well in those, and uh, I think the scouts came out uh, pretty impressed with, with 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 those drills. I think it's pretty interesting the fact that you played a couple years at corner and then you played at safety as well so that versatility is something that's there was that something that the coaches said that they really liked about you yes sir and then uh with my 40s that uh you know kind of showed them that i am fast enough to uh to play corner i played corner my first three years uh that's you know that just came you know that that's what i've been always playing um uh, in, in in college so I'm, I'm used to just going out there and, and playing that man uh, out there on the, at, at the corner. Uh, this this past year, you know, I, I'm I'm learning the safety position, get get better and better in it. And you know, I have the size to play safety, so they like to have the size to play safety, and um, you know, the cover skills to play corner. So, what really was behind your decision to shift over to safety after having some pretty productive years at, at corner? Uh, throughout my Penn State career, I've always had to play, you know, what I what was best for our defense. You know, we had you know four different defense coordinators, and then we had the sanctions at Penn State, uh, and we had limited players. So um, even even in my my sophomore and junior year, at times, you know, I would slide in there at at, uh, at free safety or strong safety, wherever wherever see you know wherever I was needed. You know, I played the nickel, I played the the buck backer, which is like a wheel backer. You know, I, I played played a lot of positions. You know, where we needed uh, where we needed players at. Um, so, so that, that that helped a lot. And I when I, when I learned defense, I had to learn the, the entire defense. You know, what everybody did on the, did did on the on the field, and that helped me out a lot. Yeah, I noticed you played uh, some above the slot and in some of the sub packages. And other thing I saw was there were quite a few times where you were lining up the defense. So as a safety. You're pretty much the quarterback of that secondary. What type of leadership does it take to do that? And even, you know, just to touch on on the the whole experience at Penn State. I mean, that was a a, a difficult time at, at one point where it took a, a certain type of leader to help that team get through those whole uh, all of the things that went on. So, can you just talk about being a leader in the secondary and also just on the football team itself to work through those dark days? Uh, you know, over the years, you just learn that you can control what you can control. You can control your mindset. Um, and we were there to play football, so you know we focused on football and 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 what we needed to do to be successful. And I think we had had some successful years uh, after the sanctions. Um, 
but you know in the back end you know you just have to, to know your assignment when you know what you what you have to do and you know what everybody else has to do it's a big help um so you can tell you can tell him to slide over here you got you had an a yet you know uh give give the corners a check to know where his help is and when everybody is working well together it, it, it helps it helps the defense as a whole um you see we uh, leaving the regular season last year we had the number one defense in the country and um i think that's because we played well we all understood the defense and we understood you know our responsibilities within that defense um, nice so, so yeah we we we, we I, th- I feel like we're leaders as a whole you know because we we all you know doing our part and and helping others where where needed now going back to the combine had a you know your 40 time you were four five six you improved that to four three nine but one thing that stood out to me was the short shuttle time you know 4.03 seconds it shows you had the lateral quickness prior to the workouts and things like that what was some of the feedback that you were getting from uh, personnel folks and, and just team officials that you had to meet with when you were out there uh, after the combine um they were impressed with my numbers uh most most scouts uh that that came to me uh said that i was running that i ran four four eight four four seven four four nine at uh for for my my uh 40s and they said that's the that's the ones that they were taking uh from the combine so uh, they really didn't need to see me run uh, again at the pro day i, I ran at the pro day because i wanted to show because i'm a lot faster than you know what it's a different setting you know and uh you know and, and it's familiar to me and it just and i was just working on my, my technical thing getting my my technique right for the 40. uh but they they like my field drills they like they like my my short shuttle and uh they like my overall performance they just uh got set in the film they want to see um uh, will i come up and hit uh and and things like that um hopefully they hopefully they, they dig in and they look at my sophomore tape my junior tape at corner and then this last year at safety and um you know get an overall picture of, of the type of player i am you mentioned how they liked you in the field drills and i, I definitely agree with that you look very smooth especially in that hip turn drill and I thought it was it was pretty good how you were able to track the ball and it looked like you caught everything that was thrown your way. Um, the gauntlet, you know, you looked good in that also. Was there ever any point where you played receiver because you caught the ball like a receiver in that gauntlet drill? Uh, yeah, um, I played some receiver in, in high school. In high school, I played. I, I started out as a quarterback and I played. I played basically everything uh, except for line in, in high school um, here and there. Um, but yeah, throughout, you know, high school, I mean, throughout my whole career, you know, it's always tough that, you know, uh, if you're an athlete, you can catch the ball, so, you know, work on your hands. Yeah, the defensive back position is probably one of the most athletic positions on the football field, and it's funny, a lot of times they say a DB is a receiver that, that can't catch, but... You know, looking at, at what you what you did at the combine, I say that's a, a a different story. So going back to Calvert Hall, you know, you you led them to number one in the state, and uh, just coming out of high school, what were some colleges that were looking at you outside of Penn State? Uh, going to, going into my senior year, I didn't I really didn't have any offers until that summer. Going in, I, I didn't have any offers. I I didn't know too much about the combine circuit. And, and, you know, going to the, you know, the Nike uh, combines and stuff, you know, I know a lot of people are doing that coming out of, coming out of middle school now. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I really didn't know too much. I didn't really know too much about that. I was, I was through it. You know, I had to fight to get offers. So I only had, I had UConn, West Virginia, uh, Temple, and it was hard to get, like Maryland didn't even offer me coming out wow. of, you know, coming out of high school. So, um, yeah, it was it was it was hard to get offers until I mean after my after my my senior season, some teams you know came on late, but it wasn't too much. I, I got Penn State offered of, like the week before signing day, um, and I, I came up to school and I came up to the school and and I, it felt like a good situation for me. Um, I you know I knew that you know I can get on that at the stage you know to show off that 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 I can play. Um, yeah, it would be. And then you know, it's a big opportunity. Right, yeah. Penn State's a major program. I mean, it's, it's right. clearly one of the, the top ones, you know, and, and it's back in extension thanks to players like yourself. So uh, speaking of opportunities, 
the Senior Bowl. Uh, I was down there, and uh, you know, I watched you in one on ones, and I was surprised by how well you were able to cover the receivers, and just just looking at the guys that you had to go against. I mean, whether it be you know shorter, muscular guys like Ty Montgomery, or Antoine Goodley, or a shorter, uh, quick guy like a Jamison Crowder, or even bigger guys like Tony Lippett and, and Vince Maley. What was it like going against those different guys, the different styles, and, and how did you approach covering the the range of receivers that you had to go against in one-on-ones? Uh, again, I, I feel like me playing different positions in, in college helped me out a lot with that because uh, it'll be like first at corner, I would play, you know, first and second down outside and receivers, doing the outside receivers, and they're usually the, the taller, bigger, stronger guys, and then I would have to, you know, third down, play the slots, um, cover the slots, and uh, press off anything on the smaller, quicker receivers. So um, I've had a lot of work with with each type of receiver, every type of receiver. So um, you know, it, it, it was it, I was just used to you know playing against the different styles and the different speeds and you know different sizes. Now, looking at some of the things that people say, you know, I saw I read somewhere that. Uh, Somebody said that that you you don't lower the boom and, and you tend to once you make a hit you kind of slide down and ends up being ankle tackles. Now, me personally, I watched you make a couple really big hits. Like looking at when you hit number ten from Nebraska, you know, and caused the interception uh, on that post route, or even when you hit number sixteen from Purdue uh, on the, the tunnel screen. What's your response when you, you see something like that that's completely wrong uh, about your hitting ability? Because I know as a safety, that's something that you have to you have to be able to come up and support against the run. So how do you respond to those type of false accusations, so to speak? Um, you know, I, I just I look at it, you know, um, and then uh, it doesn't really it doesn't anger me. But, you know, I, I know what I can do and I know what I have done. Um Maybe you know. I, I think maybe uh, they didn't watch. They watched this game, but they didn't watch these other games. Or they only had a you know a small sample of my tape. But um, I just look at it as I'm gonna have an opportunity if I am blessed with the opportunity just to show to show that that I can do it at the next level. That I can come down and hit, and um, and it all plays up at the end of the day. Just like coming into college, there was a lot of things about me uh, that was coming out that you know that I couldn't do you know but it all played out at the end of the day people are ranked higher than you you know you, it all plays at the end of the day because you always got to suit up and play football now one of the pluses that people have mentioned is your strong football intelligence you mentioned how you could play multiple positions uh, what really does a team that, that selects Adrian Amos what, what do they get as a player um, you get a player that would know how to play at every position. You know, you're going to prepare, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to know my assignments, you know, and I'm going to know the assignments of a position where I would, you know, have to step in maybe as well. So I'm going to know how to how to play corner in that defense. I'm going to know how to play safety in that defense. I'm going to know how to play nickel in that defense. Um, you know, I... You know, I take my versatility. I, I always keep my eyes open. I've been, it's been, been told to me by, you know, my mother, uh, my father, not, just my family always tell me to keep my eyes open with, with anything, not even just football, you know. So I'm, I'm a study and I'm a, I'm a learn, I'm a learn it all. So what three games would you say, you know, these people who, who have watched limited number of games, or what three games would you say best? exhibit you as, as a player? Um, if you want to watch more cornerback stuff, um, cornerback stuff, I played corner the whole my whole 2012 season. Um, so you, you can watch 2012 Ohio State or Nebraska. You know, and then um, in 2013, I played, played both. Like that. You can watch Nebraska in 2013. This past season, you can watch uh, Rutgers or, and, and Michigan State. Um, to see, you know, just to show the, the corner that that play safety, um, nickel. Now I know you said you leave you leave your options open, but what? What position, corner or safety? Is there a preference? Um, cover. 
<laughs> well, I mean, you look at a team like the Ravens, who uh, have shown interest in you. Coach Hewitt was there, and he, he worked you out. So you look at a team like the Ravens. They have Matt Elam, Anthony Levine, Terrence Brooks. These are all safeties who had a uh, corner in their background at some point and, and play both. So I'm sure that would be a, a excellent fit. Looking at the NFL, you know, being a, a guy that grew up in the Baltimore area, were there any particular players that uh, growing up that you watched, Ed Reed perhaps, or, or anybody that, that you would say, not you patterned your game after, but whose game in the league now would uh, give somebody a good understanding of what it is that you bring? Um, well, my favorite, you know, my my favorite safety growing up was obviously Ed Reed because I was, you know, I'm a Baltimore fan, and, and you know, he was he's one of the greatest safeties ever. Um, people I pattern my game around is uh, like Eric Berry, for mm-hmm. example. He played corner, he played safety, um, he played in the box, he played over the post, over the top, things like that. But one thing I want to be able to show also is is my range at safety. Um, a lot of times, you know, they they had me more in the box. Um, I didn't really get to show my, my range in the post, um, you know, playing sideline on the sideline. I think that's one of my best attributes uh, when I'm when I'm at safety is, is to play sideline on the sideline and go get the ball. So just to wrap it up, what's next on, on your agenda? What do you have going on between now and and the end of the month, end of April, when draft starts and into the first day of May? What, what do you have going through the on the next couple of, of weeks what's your process look like I'm, I'm working out you know working out every day uh, here and here in Baltimore and um and then you know I have to you know meet with teams uh I get my schedule uh I get updated by my agent uh who I have to work out with and um you know I'm just working out here waiting then I go to where I, I need to work out and then I uh come back here and, and get uh get to working out again Okay. Well, yeah, that's that sounds good, man. Definitely like what you bring to the table, the versatility and, and just to be able to play center field in the box, cover the slot, and everything that you bring to the table. You're going to be a huge asset to some teams, so we'll see what happens in the near future. We'd like to touch base with you again just a little bit before the draft just to find out how everything has, has been going along, and, and I appreciate you jumping on before we let you go why don't you go ahead and let the listeners know where they could find you on twitter or social media so they can keep up with what you got going on uh at smash amos underscore four on twitter there it goes all right adrian i appreciate you coming on man have a good one all right all right all right thank you That wraps up this edition of Talking with TD. Be sure to check out all of my interview segments at footballgameplan.com slash talkingwithtd. If you have any questions or people you want me to sit down with, hit me up on Twitter at tdavenport underscore NFL.